Whenever I shared my canning cabinet and how I store our pasta that I make homemade, I had a few of you guys request that I show you guys how I make our homemade pasta. So I'm going to walk you guys through that process today from scratch and just show you how I do it. I'll try and put timestamps. So if you already have a pasta recipe and you're just wondering how I store it, I'll try and put timestamps down below. That way you can skip ahead to the very end and see how I store this pasta with vacuum canning. So it's super simple. All you're going to need is four ingredients. It's flour, all-purpose flour, salt, and water, and then some eggs. So today I'm going to be using water glass eggs. I did these back on 914, so back in last September, which they are still perfectly fine, but we're starting to get a lot of eggs again. So I do need to go ahead and use these up so that we can then move on to using fresh eggs because I don't want these to go to waste, but I would rather use these in a recipe than to just eat them fresh. So we're gonna use them in this pasta today. But you're gonna start with two and a half cups of flour, and this is a wooden dough bowl. So I know that you see dough bowls at Hobby Lobby and stuff like that, but this is not the same kind of bowl that you see at Hobby Lobby. So you cannot just go get one from there. My mom got this at Goodwill like three or four years ago and she never used it so she just gave it to me. But it's very, very smooth and I'll bring you up close. But it's very smooth in texture and it has a waxy texture. You can see like right here down the middle that needs to be re-waxed. But it just helps prevent your dough from sticking and it's easier to knead. Hopefully that lighting is better and you can see. But this is raw wood so it really needs to be rewaxed. but this the darker is like very smooth and it feels like a candle wax if you rub your hands across it so it is waxed and this is the brand if you want to try and look it up like i said she just got this at goodwill a few years ago and then never used it and gave it to me so now I use it, but don't use just a Hobby Lobby or a rough dough bowl for this. You can use any kind of bowl. So if you don't have a dough bowl, you can always just use any bowl that you have, or you can do it right on your counter, but I like to contain the mess, so I prefer to do it in a bowl. So we're gonna start with two and a half cups of flour. And like I said, this is just all purpose flour. Based on your ingredients, because over on my blog, this post has been up for a while, but it's called organic pasta, or I think it's organic pasta is what I've titled it. But to get organic pasta, you do need to use all organic products. So that is how you would get the organic pasta. We like this recipe just because it does use a lot of eggs and it gets really old having to just eat regular eggs. So we prefer to put them in something. So later this tonight, I'm gonna keep some of this pasta fresh and I'm gonna make fresh pasta and meatballs and I'm gonna make a brioche bread later that will also use up some of our eggs. But all you're gonna do is create a well in there and I'm actually gonna bring you guys up close so that you can see. So I have my flour here and now all you're gonna do is add half a teaspoon of salt and I like to use the Redmond Real Salt. You can use any salt that you like and then just whisk that up. And you can make a small little well in the middle. I really don't try very hard on this. If you do it on the counter, you do need to make a better well. But if it's in a bowl, the mess is contained and you really do not have to worry about that. Just the well is so that all your eggs do not run out. Because whenever you put your eggs in here and it's on the counter, if it runs out, then it's going to spread all over your counter, if that makes sense. And it's just going to create a huge mess. So like I've said so many times already, I prefer doing it in a bowl just so that the mess is contained and not running all over my countertop. So now I'm going to take four eggs and since mine are water glass, I am going to wash them really well. That way all the pickling lime comes off of them. So I got my eggs washed and they're right here, but you do want to make sure that you crack them in a separate bowl and before you just like crack them into your mixture because where these are water glass, you're not sure if they're fresh or not. So that one is fine. I just busted the yolk. Oil. So 
So now we have our four eggs in here and you can either start with a fork by whisking it up or honestly, whatever you have, I'm going to grab a fork. You can use a whisk, but I think it gets too heavy on the whisk. So you're just going to start to like incorporate this in. And if you're doing this on the counter, you're going to do the exact same thing. I did not add my water yet just because you're not sure if you're going to use it. So it is all based on your egg size to your flour ratio. So not all eggs are the exact same. And I would say mine today were medium size. They're farm fresh eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my one teaspoon of water just because it looks like I'm gonna need it and a little bit of water goes a long way. So you do not wanna go ahead and put like two or three teaspoons of water in this just because you don't know if you're gonna need it. And you want this to be a, you do not want this to be runny at all. So now I'm just gonna use my hands and slowly start to incorporate this. It does take a while for it to come together. And once you do, then you're gonna start kneading it once you get your dough ball. If you have a KitchenAid mixer, this is so much easier to do it in your KitchenAid. And that's actually how I prefer to do it, but I know a lot of people don't have a KitchenAid, so I am doing it like this today, just for the sake of this video. But normally I would use my KitchenAid mixer just because it helps this process go so much quicker. So this is how my mixture looks right now. So what I'm actually gonna do, because it is too dry right now, it's not coming together very well. So I'm gonna actually get another egg out and go wash it and I'm gonna whisk it in the bowl and only put about half the egg in here and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I needed my dough for, gosh, that was probably five or six minutes. And now it is very hard, like it's a dense ball, pretty heavy, and it is not sticky. If it's sticky, you can roll it up on the side to get the rest of those, the flour, but I did not need that. So I ended up putting a tad bit more of the egg and one teaspoon additional of water. So in total, there was probably about four and a quarter of an egg used, and then two teaspoons of water. So this is the dough that you'll get. And now you just wanna cover this with plastic wrap so that it doesn't dry out and let it sit for at least 30 minutes because it needs to relax before we can do anything else with it. So I'm gonna cover this and let it rest and I'll see you back in 30 minutes. So it's been 30 minutes. I cleaned up the dishes and stuff, but the countertop is still dirty. And that's okay because it is just gonna get even more dirty. So the dough is now ready to be worked. And what you're gonna need is a pasta maker, but you do not have to have this. So if you don't have a pasta maker, you can also just use a rolling pin and a knife or a pizza cutter, whatever you have. So you just need to roll the pasta out and then you need something that can cut thin strips or if you wanna cut thick strips to make lasagna, I've done that before too. 
So this pasta maker, it can make, um, they're sort of like between like fettuccine and linguine pasta. And then it also makes like the angel hair pasta. And all we're gonna do is just clamp this onto our countertop. So you do want to make sure it is secured pretty good. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'll bring you guys over here so you can so see. So this is how it works. You just clamp this on and it secures it to the countertop. And then this right here is your roller. And you just put this in here and it will roll and it will flatten out your dough. And then this is how you decide your thickness. So these numbers and on mine, Seven is the thickest it can go, and then as you go down to zero, that's the thinnest. Some of them are opposite. And then if you want the linguine pasta, you put it in here, and it will make this one work. And then if you want the angel hair, you put it in this one. So that is why I like this one is just because it's all made together, and I wish they did have more attachments like this because I would like a rotini maker, like a rotini pasta shape. So they don't have that in this attachment. So that is one downfall, but at least I do have two and I'm able to make two different types of pasta. So all we're gonna do is unwrap our dough and we're gonna divide it in three different pieces. So now you're gonna see why it's so important to not make your dough too wet because this is already softer and more tacky than it was whenever we, whenever we initially wrapped it. So. It's not wet and it is not like my hand can touch it. I'm not sticking at all. It feels like Play-Doh is the best way that I can describe it right now. But you want that. You do not want it sticky because whenever you go to roll this, it is going to stick in your pasta maker and gonna make such a big mess. So if your pasta dough is too wet, you need to add flour. And the entire time that we're doing this, we're gonna constantly be adding flour to keep it from sticking. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flour now. But for now, we're gonna cut this into three different pieces. Don't worry about it being like super perfect or anything like that. I don't really worry about it. This piece right here, I'm going to actually put back in its own plastic wrap. And I'm gonna save that because instead of making the pasta now, I'm gonna reserve it for later. And that way it doesn't have to cook as long. So I am going to roll this back up and save it for later tonight and we're gonna have dinner. But one of these pieces I am going to roll up just partially just to keep the air off of it so that it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to go ahead and work that here in a little bit also. So you can do this with a rolling pin. I just like doing it with my hands, less dirty tools. So just flatten it out. And you don't want it like too, too thin. You're going to want your pasta maker to do the work for you. So just as long as it can fit through there. And you may have to adjust on the settings. And I know a lot of people, if you watch any videos or any tutorials, everybody is gonna do this different. So at this point, it's already dry. It does not stick to my hands at all. I can move it. But I am going to go ahead and flour this lightly because Whenever it squishes it out, it's going to get to the inside of the dough. And if it's wet at all, it is going to stick to your roller. So I like to go ahead and just flour it up. And as you can see, see it's tacky in there. So it started sticking. So I'm going to add more flour. and now it's coming out the bottom. Before it wasn't coming out the bottom, so just w keep an eye on it, and if you start to see it rolling itself back up underneath, and I'll bring you guys up close on the next one, but if you start to see it rolling back up underneath of your rollers, you need to back up with the lever over here. You need to back it up so that it doesn't tear your dough, and you'll just need to reflower it like I did, and then continue going. But mine is sticking right there, so. I'm just gonna sprinkle some flour in there.
And I promise it is not this hard. Once you get the first roller through, then it is so quick after that. But just initially getting it dry enough to go through, that is the hardest part. Okay, so now we have one piece that completely rolled out and you're actually gonna fold it back over and we're gonna run it back through. So we're just gonna squish it back down and it may not stick, but whenever it gets pressed through, it will go back together. So it was getting too thick this way. It was almost wider than my pasta maker. So I'm gonna fold it in half and run it back through on that same setting. We're trying to get the perfect size, if that makes sense. Okay, so this is good enough. I do not worry about getting it completely perfect. You just want it semi-uniform, if that makes sense. So you don't want your edges, like you don't want a big curvy lopsided piece because whenever you go to roll it through, you're gonna end up with short noodles instead of the long noodles that you want. And now I'm gonna flour this really, really well because we're gonna begin, make, because we're gonna begin making this thinner and you can totally go ahead and cut it at this thickness if you want. It is all dependent upon how thick of a noodle you want. But seven is a little bit too thick for me. Some people like it on the very thinnest and I like more of a thicker noodle than that. So it's completely up to you and what you want. But I am gonna go ahead and turn this down to about four and start running it through. And I'm really bad for skipping steps. So I just went all the way from seven to four and you can of course work your way down and roll it through three times on each like once on each setting three times in total but i just find that to be a waste so i would rather just go ahead and get the bulk of it done and run it through quicker Okay, so my piece is getting way too long, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and just cut it right here. And you can cut it wherever you want, but I do not want mine that long because whenever it hangs over, it's gonna draw like this. So this is how long one noodle is gonna be. And then this will be, be broken and this will be a noodle. Hopefully that makes sense. So now I'm gonna flour both sides of this again really, really well just so it doesn't stick whenever we cut it because you want your noodles to come out separate and not try and 
form back together because they will stick and then you will just end up with a mess. So over here to the side, I set up this laundry to drying rack. It is clean. I just now wiped it down. And mine is a vintage one. I'll see if I can find some and link down below for you guys. But usually you can find them at thrift stores and antique stores. This one still has a tag on it. I think I paid $8 it says. So you can get them cheaper if you find them at a thrift store. But this is just the easiest way I have found to dry the pasta, especially if you are doing bulk like if you're going to be making a lot so as you can see right there i still have plenty of pasta so i'm not making pasta in bulk today i am doing it just to show you guys how i do it and the process but typically whenever i do this so i did it like three months ago maybe four i tried to make enough to get us through winter and so whenever i do a big bulk day i will bring out both of these racks so i have two of them and they will all be completely full with pasta and then i will put them in jars and vacuum can them so I'm going to start hanging the pasta as it's done on these racks, but you can use any kind of rack. Anything that you can drape pasta over will work. You do not have to have any kind of special rack. They do make pasta drying racks, but usually they're pretty small and they don't really work for whenever I do it in bulk. So I finished rolling out the dough and that's what I ended up with. So I'm going to let this hang for at least 24 hours and then I will be back tomorrow and I will show you guys how I store it. But I do have this much left and that is going to be for tonight's dinner. So it's not quite time to work on our pasta, but I am going to go ahead and mix up a brioche dough, but I'm actually going to make it garlicky. I've never tried adding the Italian seasonings that I'm going to add to it. So if it tastes good and it works out, then it'll be on the blog. But if not, then you just won't see that recipe. But I'll bring you guys along with me as I make So if you've never made a brioche dough before, it uses a lot of butter and a lot of eggs, but it is a super soft bread and typically it's sweet. But I'm actually going to take out some of the sugar and I'm going to make it more savory and make it like a garlic bread. Just since it does use up so many eggs, which it's only three. If you double the recipe, then it's six, of course. But that'll be three less eggs that we have that need to be used from our water glassed eggs because I am trying to use those up before we can use our fresh ones. But for this brioche dough, you are going to want to have a stand mixer. You have to knead it for about 15 minutes before it'll come together. To get it to come together by hand is pretty difficult. So I am gonna be doing it in my stand mixer here behind me.
For this recipe, I used three quarter cups of warm milk, a quarter cup of sugar, two teaspoons of yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, three and a half to three and three quarter cups of flour, three eggs, half a cup of butter that is room temperature, and then to the mixture, I added one teaspoon of parsley, two teaspoons of rosemary, one teaspoon of thyme, and one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. And I mixed on low for about three minutes until it was starting to get combined. And then I mixed on medium speed for about 12 minutes. And it turned out really good. I ended up baking it at 350 for about 40 to 45 minutes. And you do have to make sure that it cools completely before you cut it because it will be doughy on the inside if you cut into it too early. So my dough finally came together and you can tell it's not tacky or sticky but it's like so light and fluffy and now I'm gonna take it out and knead it into just a ball and put it back in here and I am gonna grease the bowl and then let it sit for an hour and double in size. After removing it from the bowl after it's risen for an hour, I cut it into three equal pieces and rolled it out. And then I started to braid it together. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It is all going to bake up the same. But depending on how thick you do it, you may have to fold under the ends like I did. Just because I put mine in my normal loaf size pan and it turned out perfectly. In a pot on the stove, I added about three tablespoons of butter and then I added the same exact seasonings that I used into the mixture. I put in with the butter also and I let it melt. Once it was melted, I brushed it onto the bread before it rose and then after it was finished baking, I also brushed the same mixture on top again. Adding cheese to your dough would also be really good, but Ben does not like cheese on his garlic bread. He just likes regular plain bread, so I did not add cheese to mine, but I think cheese would be a really good inclusion to add. It was getting really late in the evening, so instead of making the meatballs, I just decided to do ground beef instead with some homemade canned pasta sauce. After I rolled out and cut my pasta, then I added the noodles to boiling water. The boiling water does have salt in it and you'll need to stir it occasionally. You'll see that I use tongs to do this and this will just keep them from sticking, especially in my glass pot. Everything wants to stick to the bottom so I do have to usually like stir it pretty often. But once they start boiling again, then you'll see that they start to float and I let mine boil for about five to six minutes.
Okay, so it is the next day and I did go ahead and break my noodles and put them in this jar. You do have to make sure that they are completely dry, but take a really dry rag, and this is cleaned, it's just stained really bad, but wipe the rim of the jar really well just to remove any of the flour that may have gotten on there. And then you're gonna take a clean lid and set it on there. And today I'm gonna be using this, and it's a mason jar vacuum sealer. So in my previous dry canning video, or vacuum canning video, I used a vacuum sealer and the attachments that go on, and you have to have the hose that hooks to the vacuum sealer. But this is just a lot easier, so I have been using this, and I do like it. It's less than $30, so if you're wanting to start vacuum canning, this is the cheapest way I've found to get started. So you push it down until it's all the way on there. Okay, so once it's on there, there's a button right here, right there. Hopefully you can see that. Right there, and you're gonna press it, and it'll start counting up. And this will probably take a second just because there is a lot of air in here. Okay, and you can hear it just now release. Hopefully you heard it. But I should have put these in a quart jar. There's a lot of empty space in here. It would have worked better, but this is a half gallon because I wanted to keep the length of the noodles more. So now you're just gonna pop it off and your jar is sealed. So one thing that I do like about this is it converts to a wide mouth sealer. All you do is pop this bottom part off and it goes back to a wide mouth sealer. So I just have the attachment on right now. But that is gonna be it for this video. So hopefully you found it helpful, but thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys will like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.